find out. All right, magnetic starter works. No smoke. That's a good sign. a relief but let's see if it actually runs runs Hey friends, it's Brian and I'm gonna work on a project today. I'm gonna run power to this machine. And, oh, uh, you know what? Oh, fuck it. I guess I had the wire for this. Oh well, I'll just wad it again. Oh well. Anyway, we're gonna run power from here, down, across, install a switch, and then drop to that. Now, I technically don't need a switch there. It's close enough to have, it doesn't need another means of disconnect, but I'm gonna put a switch in there and I'm also gonna eventually install a plug so I can disconnect the two in case for some reason I wanna move this out. Um, I got the mill running, that's another video, so it works. Um, there's a lot of junk on here. I don't wanna hear it from the armchair experts. Um, I will move all this junk before I do much more with this mill, it needs to be clean and gone through. I've owned it for four years and have not had it running. So today's project is get it under power, see if it actually runs. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I mean, this is a 1941 lathe. This thing's 80 years old. There's just not much that goes wrong with them. So what do we got going on here? We got a uh, 10 horsepower motor. That's my idler motor control panel for a rotary phase converter that's the rotary part this uh, provides um, 30 amps three phase power uh, that's enough uh, or 20 amps I don't, I don't remember doing that. yeah 20 amps so this is a 27 amp three phase draw about a 50 amp uh, single phase draw and we've got 20 10 and spare so that's the mill that's just I could got two of them for the same price. And then this is 20 amp uh, that we're gonna bring the, the circuit to. We're gonna bring the circuit in through probably uh, this one in the corner and uh, power's off. Um, so let me, get, let me get started on this and uh, we'll get this stubbed in. Now, before we go very far on this video, if you do not know how to work around electricity safely, this video is not gonna teach you how to work around electricity safely. Um, so you either know how to do this or you don't. I'm not here to teach you how to work on electricity. And, uh, you know, electricity doesn't play, it'll kill you. I, I can't make it any nicer or simpler than that. Home Depot only had snap-ins. You know, if you watch my other videos, you know I hate snap-ins. Um, but that's what we're going to use today because that's what we can buy today. All right, so that one's in. like them compared to many other options. Alright, so next what we need to do is figure out where we want to make the turn and to figure out where we want to make the turn we need to have an idea of 
how this is all going to fit together. Okay, so this is an outside elbow. I can take this cover off, and what we want to do is figure out how long this piece of pipe needs to be in order to get in here and come across. So that's probably a good spot. So it's looking like it's 16 and a half inches, maybe 17 inches. Uh, yep, so we'll do 17 inches. And let's get that cut. a little hard to do this uh, without something to hold it. That's smooth enough. So this will be simpler if we go ahead and put it together before we start trying to put it in there. Fully inserted. down nice and tight and then we'll here. All right, so this one's going to be a little bit difficult because we've got screws that are behind um, the other panel. So um I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do this then. Looks like I need to take another um, three quarters of an inch or so off. Uh, I, I got to get the clearance out. Um, I'll bear it back. Alright, so let's try this again. Alright, 
that's better. <coughs> So, next thing we got to figure out is how far over does this go? Thirty-two inches is where I want it. So, I'm going to measure thirty-two inches, and then I'm going to cut it. Let's uh, work on the other side. I hate snap ins, but that's what I've got, so that's what I'm going to use. This is going to work. does not need to be level, this is just a personal thing. And of course I don't have a lug to ground with, that's irritating. There we go, but this is in. Alright. is not a number two square. All right, let's open 
on this side. put a clamp here and there so let me get that set up solid uh, it's actually time to run a wire okay so I'm gonna start with the solid that the guy accidentally pulled that's the hardest to run fortunately it's my ground so it's not really a big deal Yes, we need to untangle that. Solid is not really the right wire for this, but again, it's, it's such a short run that I'm just going to make it work. And it's a ground, so it's not really a big deal. Technically, this is a bonding wire. black wire. This is a conductor. Run this up here. The uh, capacity of this conduit is five of these. And we're only going to run three grounds, so we're well within the capacity of this conduit.
to the red. This is THHN wire or THNW wire, but it's stranded and that makes it much easier to run through conduit. conductor for three phase and it'll be the same as the other ones. Three and one smaller wire. 
are um, becoming a little challenging. this is good for like 20 amps So, now let's turn our attention over here. So, first things first. Got black. Thank you. 
ground it, and we'll deal with that later. For the meantime, we're just going to tuck this up in here. Undo these. in here. Almost. Once it's scored, it'll generally split. Part of this is um, not damaging the wire.
like to have this box bound, bonded, but I'll settle for bonding the equipment. I need to pick up a lug for this. Meanwhile, that'll work. So, let me go get the next piece of this. Alright, so the next part of this is to make this disconnectable. And this will be something of a pain in the ass, probably. Oh yeah, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Good ones, those don't come out. Set this down and see what we're dealing with. So I want that to be about there. See how and what the instructions say. Yeah, 1.6 inches. That's going to be really, really tight. this a little bit. So which that's all you really want to do with that, just push it out of your way. Then you want to decide what your conductors are. So we're going to do black, red, blue. Black, red, blue.
that's about five eighths. And then I'm feeling froggy, so I'm going to use and these were nine ninety nine each, so they're cheap. Here is keep these short and don't over tighten them. that the mail goes should be to the power. That is mildly important. So there's a piece of plastic that needs to come out of here to make this work. I'll show you what to get rid of. So that's the piece you keep. And that's the piece that's blocking you that just needs to go away. And then you want to put this back together before you insert the cable. But not very much back together.
So again, we're going to start with the green. It will be opposed by red. Okay. So there is a very much a method to my madness. So that's opposed by red. Now we need to look at the clocking. Okay, so what position? All right, so that's green. So the black comes over here on this side. And that leaves our white and blue on the other side. It's not super important with three phase because you, especially when you have a reversing switch, but I think it's something that it's just easy enough to pay attention to at this point. All right, so. These are normally keyed. What I mean by keyed is there's a little lock, there's a little tab. that little tab is locked then these can go in. Alright, and then we'll crank down on these to take the stress off the cord. And that should result in a cord that doesn't move. to be UL listed, I'd be impressed. Most I think that this has to do with UL is it's got that thing printed on it. Hubble this is not. Okay, so at this point, we should have a keyed Now, we've got it back here. So let me work my way back here and we'll work on that. All right, so one of the things we want to do is pull this old cable out of the way. We'll just throw it over the machine. And then we got to decide how much of the new cable we need. And this looks pretty good right here.
move you guys closer so you can see what we're working with. All right, so we got a magnetic starter here. This is old. I don't even know what some of this shit does. We're not gonna fuck with this any more than we have to. So, we've clearly got red. I mean, this is where we're making our connections right here. No attempt to, under, to follow the color codes. seen better days. Crowd. Oh, well, okay, we're a lot crowded in here. think anything more is going to go in here.
funny. There's another place I could have brought this in on the side. Oh, well. We're already going through the pain in the ass of getting it in this one. out of the way and then come down here and start working on this It's just picking power up from these to run the magnetic starter. Wow, what a mess. I'm not convinced that this motor starter is right. It's awfully large for what it is. clearly a green in here. I need to figure out what's going on over here. Let me go see if I can find a wiring diagram for this. 
All right, I think it's wired correctly. I don't know what the hell's going on over here, so I'm gonna make sure this is tight. Leave the ground unconnected right now. Okay, it looks like I can put the ground back there, so I'm gonna do that. sense you know I, I've got to pull these out of here This wire insulation is shot. This needs to be replaced. All right, let me go see where that goes. All right, so this is definitely a ground. So I'm gonna try and connect my other ground to it.
pain in the ass. I ready to jump the whole goddamn thing. It's particularly hard to get in and out of here. friends so it's a uh, Saturday morning here and I'm gonna start working on this again and first things first is I want to loosen this gland nut Loosen it, we got to tighten it. Now well, we can try and loosen it. I don't, I don't like this style. You know what? Screw it. I will get a different clamp for that. So, the way this works is um, the black and the red are the feeds. Uh, I should probably take pictures of this green is a return and um, so black and and green go to the uh, barrel switch red and white come from it and these wires are shot to fuck ain't no nice way to say it Good thing I didn't fire this up and then I actually checked it to see what was going on. It looks like, yeah, that's secure enough. Um, so we'll just hold on to that. Um, it's a half inch. I might have another one around here somewhere. So let's go to the other side and work on this. Okay, so we got a barrel switch and we got some clamps here. Let me get this uh, camera positioned. This is not really how I want to spend my Saturday, but again, uh, getting shocked isn't on my agenda either. So we're going to score the outer edge.
All right, so um, I'm not going to do anything to this till it's up under there. So let's let's work. All right, so first things first, I've got to bring the wires in. And it's interesting. It looks like these used to come in a different place. I looked up the uh, gentleman who owned. All right, so I bought this machine from an engineer in San Antonio. I, I don't know what the deal was. I don't think he ever had it under power, to be honest. Um, and he bought it from a retired machinist in Shawnee, Oklahoma. And he had a pretty distinguished uh, career as a machinist and a tool maker. Uh, I, I'm, I'm arguably not a machinist. And I'm sure as hell not a tool maker. I'm just a guy who likes to make stuff. And... Uh, you know, I just hope I can not get hurt and do this machine some justice during its tenure with me. Um, this machine is way bigger than anything I need, but I think it's big enough to do anything I want to do. And um, by the time you pay for the machines with cool teeth, tools and the features, you know, spending what I spent on this machine anyway. All right, so. I'm gonna copy the, I'm gonna keep the same arrangement of wires. I don't think they're gonna. <clears throat> All right. Try and get it back behind here, but I don't, I don't have a whole lot of faith in being able to get this back here. We'll see. So far. So apparently, there's a spot this needs to go through right here. In the ass. There we go.
I rest my fingers. So the way this works is in one position over here, it's a straight pass. In the other position, it uses these connectors here to reverse the uh, position of the wires. Do the other one first. And again, I, I just have to rest my hands. It, it hurts. It hurts my hands and my forearms to work overhead like this. feel like that's the best connection. Actually, think what it needs is uh, more wire stripped off. connected. So let's go ahead and lock this down. I think we're already dead, but yep, that looks good. And 
and then we'll go ahead and put this back on. Now this is something of a pain in the ass because the start stop switch or pilot switch is too close. Huh? It didn't turn out to be so bad though. This is an old uh, cutler hammer. Okay, so now the action moves to the back. All right, so it's time for one of my not favorite uh, clamps. What I have on hand is a click, click uh, clamp. So we will use it even though I don't like them. And it's well documented on this channel that I do not like these clamps, but it beats taking the time to go to Home Depot and buy the other kind that I do like. get rid of this I'll be right back you know it's really weird working on a very old machine that you know has been owned and operated and that was somebody's pride and joy it's, it's a strange feeling I can't explain
motor starters, piece of shit. It's just a horrible, horrible fucking layout for a motor starter. No cable clearance. Let's go ahead and secure the sheath of the cable to this. So, black and green are my feed wires, and they go up to here. Turns out I left just enough. wires in here. You don't see very much tin copper anymore. Nothing wrong with it. It just it's uh, not something you see much. thing is I think I'm using the exact same SO cable that I pulled out of here. <clears throat> that needs some tape around it. Alright, so push that back in. Let me get some tape. That's another thing you don't see very much of is you don't see a whole lot of soldered splices. And again, there's nothing nothing wrong with it, you just don't see a lot of it. We can do with our ground. I don't know. I think I'm going to try and get it underneath that screw back there.
off. Make this into a little hook. We're ready for some excitement. Let's find out. All right, magnetic starter works. No smoke. That's a good sign. Let's see if it actually runs runs. 